All right, we're gonna have a little bit of fun here. We're gonna do a, bit, a little bit of a comparison with uh, three different projection technologies. Now we're not talking HD or anything like that. We're talking the 90s here. So I got, uh, well, let's see what we got here. First one from InFocus. We have a rather generic, but absolutely massive uh, LCD projector. And this thing is just huge. But yeah, let's pull that one out and give it a try. Now, like I said, this thing is huge, and it, it really is, but it has a hell of a lot of options on it as well. Um, I have audio out, subwoofer for some reason, microphone, mouse control, as well as I have, there's a, a little remote control I have in the bag, which I assume is for controlling the mouse through that. Ball warnings, video inputs, and this rather ridiculous cable here, which goes to a switch box. And that thing here, on one side, it'll actually do VGA pass-through, on the other side, if I rotate it, um, it'll go over to Mac mode, and it gives me a 15-pin video connector. It actually also has connections for both PS2 and ADB. So I can actually have my laptop a hell of a way from the uh, projector itself, and yeah, it'll work. Plus, I also have an infrared receiver back here, and a lock for it, and a couple other adjustments like Keystone and all that. But as for the picture uh, video itself... Well, it's not too bad. Let me just change the color on that. Can I? There we go. Yeah, it's really not all that bad. It looks a lot better than it looks in this video here, but yeah, it's color. It'll do 16-bit. I think I'm running right now at, uh, was it 1024 by 768 or let's quickly give that a bit of a look. Eight hundred by six hundred. Okay, so that there you go. There's your typical high-end '90s um, LCD projector that's running right here. If I can reach the light, you can see it again. There we go. And yeah, probably would have set you back about fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. Gave you not that bad of a picture. Okay, now and moving on from that one there, we got this. Doesn't seem like a whole hell of a lot. I didn't even know it was a projector. Thing is, it's not. Until the remote falls off. You open a little door here, and it gives you a nice little set of instructions. Um, the smart slide. You certainly get the idea what this does. It has a little mounting mechanism here. And what it actually does is that you actually mount it inside of your Kodak Ecta Pro projector for slides. And that's how it works. So let's give that one a try. Right, so like I was saying, the Pocket Pro is an absolutely ridiculous device. So much... Okay, so the last one had a decent 800 by 600 resolution. This is 640 by 480. So much, I couldn't use my tough book to demonstrate this. I had to pull out ye olde ThinkPad with uh, OS2 warp on it. But uh, yeah, this is all the digital electronics you'd ever need in a projector. We have an infrared window right there. And we have all these fancy controls here, frame control, uh, graphics text modes, brightness contrast, and frequency tuning for the actual video connection. We have another infrared window here. I'm just gonna release that. There's your remote control. It does have an emulated mouse on it. The rest of the controls are just quite simply uh, what you see here. And it, it, it's strange. Um, it's a HD15 connector here that feeds into the unit, but on the back of the ThinkPad, said 15-pin connector breaks out We have for VGA and the serial port, presumably for the mouse, and that's just weird. Anyways, but uh, it's all in here, and again, how it works is that if I can get this released, I cannot, hold on. This is supposed to emulate a slide. And if I go over here and actually switch over to external video mode, and we look through here, you can actually see my desktop. That's an amazing resolution, uh, or for small size resolution LCD panel. But how we load this is ridiculous. So we have a, a hole here on the bottom and a little weird latch on the side. You go in your ectographic, onto the spindle, lock into place, drop the slot LCD into the projector, and turn it on.
And there you have it. In full loving grayscale, you have your desktop. In 640 by 480, this is about the cheapest way you could probably get anything onto there. This is most likely a Windows 3.1 and DOS era thing. This is just, the resolution's just so low. No color, but I guess it gets things done. But I would suggest that this is probably around $500, $700 item. Really, once you take the lamp and all that out of it, it makes it really small, makes it quite cheap. Right, and then moving on to our last one here. Hidden away inside a briefcase. An overhead projector tablet. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, one of these. I'm sure I've, mm, I've seen more of these being used than anything else in the collection here, but let's give this one here a try. And here we are while saving, I guess, the best for last. We have our OHP panel installed. And again, we got to use the ThinkPad because this thing works in absolutely absurdly low resolution. But uh, I think what drives me crazy is that, remember how I said the um, other adapter there must have been old for the 3.1 DOS era? This goes back even further, almost purely to DOS. Um, we have our 15-pin VGA here, and right next to it we have a 9-pin video connector. So that's monochrome MDA, CGA, and EGA. Wow, okay. And also, yes, as obvious, I already mentioned, um, monochrome panel. So, you see nothing on it right now. Save the best for last. Got a couple of controls here, so you can actually control your shading and dithering for red, green, and blue. And I have a couple modes I can switch between over here. But... No, uh, let me turn on the light here and then give you a good idea on what exactly we're experiencing in terms of uh, graphical quality. Okay, and switch off the clear mode. And there's your OS 2. And... Uh, the shading, all the shading modes are crap. Um, black and white on this thing is about the worst. I can tell you this is probably... This is the mid-range option I'm pretty sure about. Just simply because it's an LCD and it's a fairly massive LCD at that. But the quality out of this thing is just absolutely terrible. Plus not only that, you have to lug around the absolutely massive overhead projector here just to make it work. But, ugh. Anyways, so there you go. Again, full mono... It, it, I can understand, like, I've seen adapters where these have been used with Macintosh systems, but those make a lot more sense because, well, the 9-inch Mac SE and Mac Plus and all that, those are monochrome, straight monochrome, so you really don't have to worry about that. But here in color or anything with grayscale or dithering, it just does not work all that well. Text modes are fantastic, though. You run this in DOS or something like that, it looks absolutely beautiful. But, yeah, for graphic present graphical presentations, um beyond pie charts and PowerPoints that are pretty simple. Yeah, um, these are terrible panels. Uh, ugh, God. Now that was a pretty quick uh, run through there of just three different projection technologies I had on hand. Um, I really do kind of wish I could go a little bit more in depth on each one on this particular video, but I only have a couple minutes of tape left on this camera, and well, uh, well, if you want me to revisit any of these three, just leave a comment down below and I'll take a look at it maybe sometime next year or something like that or yeah just leave a comment and I hope you enjoyed this.